Well, let's talk Foo Foo the Snoo. I guess I should explain just a little bit about the title of this paper. Some of you hopefully have already been introduced to Foo Foo the Snoo, uh, given a paper with a title of a variation around Foo Foo the Snoo for a couple of years now. And some of you might even be able to go back into your memories and your childhood and remember uh, the Dr. Seuss book, I Can Read With My Eyes Shut. Fufu the Snoo is a character in one of uh, his books, one of the less controversial ones. And Fufu the Snoo is a metaphor for what I want to talk about. Um, the basic thesis of the book, I guess you could say, is that the more you read, the more things ultimately you're going to learn and the more places you're going to end up being able to go, both cognitively, but probably physically as well. So mm, that's the intro and a little bit explanation about where Foo Foo the Snoo fits in this. I'm going to talk about professional reading. I want to anchor it in a couple of publications. Um, this one from some colleagues from UCD a couple of years ago now, actually challenging all of these publications that some of us are under some pressure to produce and asking who actually reads them. There's so much that you could read. Could you possibly read it all? Well, I think the answer is no to that. I've got three underlying assumptions uh, in this short time with you. The first is that professional reading is really important. I hope you don't disagree. But as I've already established, and I want to substantiate even further, we're awash with a deluge of publications. And that leads us to the problem of finding time to do slow reading, if you like, deep and meaningful reading, rather than just the kind of surface glancing that I certainly find um, can become uh, a habit if you're not careful. And to substantiate the um, glut of literature, now this is quite an old publication now uh, in the Australasian Journal of Educational Technology, but it counted up 270 journals in the field of educational technology. About half of those, I think um, just less than that, were designated, um, actually one third were designated open access articles. We actually maintain on our NIDL website a list of um, journals and we try to flag which ones might be better reading than others. And uh, when I did the slide, actually probably six months ago, there are 146 open access journal articles on the page, along with many closed articles. How could you possibly read all of that literature? And then this is a very interesting article from last year, um, challenging what we read and illustrating how what we choose to read is actually a political practice. The article shows how much literature that we don't read in non-English speaking countries or publications that are not published in English, publications that are not published in, in developed countries. So, um, we shouldn't fool ourselves to think that what we're reading is really a true reflection of the literature. And of course, I hope many of you familiar, are familiar with the fact that this is the seventh year that we've produced the NIDL top 10 list of good reads. And we released them only, I think, um, just over a week ago for 2022, i.e. the ones that were published last year. Um, I'm gonna talk about those shortly. But, um, and you can go and, and look at those on, on our website um, there, if you like, uh, the general thesis is you're going to hear a little bit about in the short time I have is from theory to practice and back again. But I do invite you to have a look at the top 10 reads. If this is anything, it's a little taster. Um, usually we're asked, how do we select 10 good reads. We don't say they're the best reads. We choose them quite intentionally. And there is a criteria and methodology um, that we adopt. And that's uh, published. You can go and look at that. I'm not going to spend valuable time elaborating. Other than to say, we do try to look for things that are a little bit different. Some quick facts about our top 10 for this year. Um, actually, doing a male pure binary gender breakdown was problematic for two reasons. One, 
Um, based on authors' names alone, it's actually quite tricky this year. There are 44 authors in total, so I'm not sure it would be a valid distinction. The second is such binary, binary sort of distinctions on gender are now quite problematic. So we haven't done a, a gender analysis um, this time round, other than just saying there are 44 authors. And you can see from this slide that um, there are three single authors in 2022. In other words, three articles that we chose have a single author only. And it happens to be that they're all uh, men on this occasion. Um, you will see that by far the most of the articles, or 50% if I want to be accurate, come from multiple authors. And that's a trend over the years. Um, let me also share with you the kind of geographical distribution, particularly in light of what I said about bias and what we read being a political practice. Surprisingly, given my roots, um, this is the first time, if you look at the underneath the table there, the first time there's nothing from Australasia. Um, most of them from Europe, UK and North America and Middle East um, contributed uh, three publications this year. The comparison isn't quite um, oranges and oranges here because the bottom comparison is actually by the location of the authors rather than just the prime author. Here um, we have the types of journals that we've chosen in our top 10 over the years. And you will see an increasing trend right on the far side of the, the far column towards journals that are other than those that are very well known. Um, up the exception of post-digital science this year, which has two articles, nine, uh, sorry, eight of the other um, publications come from eight different journals. So a little background, the top journal, um, just to wrap up, um, I mentioned it already, is Post-Digital Science and Education. And I also mentioned that the Australasian Journal of Educational Technology, known as AJET, didn't get a look in this time round, even though for many years it had the number one article. Those of you who have already seen this list will know that our very top article came from Tim Fawns talking about entangled pedagogy, and in particular, challenging that popular myth of pedagogy first, first um, talking about how entangled the technology is with the uh, pedagogy, but also the broader context and the driving forces. What's really important, we like to think in our selection of top tens, is what you see on the one side of the slide is our explanation of why we chose it. And um, we usually add a little twiddle to a critical twist into those um, explanations and the narrative that fits all together. Our number two article, if you were in the previous presentation, you would have heard me talk about this. Um, perhaps we've chosen our articles outside of the top one by the way they kind of connect with each other rather than saying one is better than the other. Our number one most definitely is the best. This, though, it's topical about the language and the modalities we have. So it's still a, a good read, and that's why it made the cut. And our third article probably comes from a journal that you haven't seen, um, Studies in Technology Enhanced Learning. It's a relatively new open access journal, only a couple of years old, particularly good for doctoral students, early researchers, talking about the importance of theories and frameworks and models and how they shape what it is that we actually observe. So those are the top three. I'm not going to go through the other seven. Maybe I'll just single out um, one. Uh, I think it's our number six article, Impossible Dreaming on Speculative Education Fiction and Hopeful Learning Futures. Uh, speculative fiction is one of these methodologies that's become quite popular at the moment. Um, the narrative is quite critical um, from an Indigenous perspective, where uh, in Indigenous cultures, particularly the Māori culture that I'm familiar with, actually the future lives in the past. Uh, the future has already been um, woven together with the past, and it's not really reflected in a lot of that speculative fiction, even though it talks about decolonization and Indigenous or ingenuity. Actually, I don't think they're quite walking the talk, but that's for another day. We also produce a top 10 uh, for COVID articles. We've done this for three years now. We didn't do a narrative this year because I don't know about you, but 
I'm over COVID. I don't really need to read anything more that's been published. There's a truckload, well, actually a mountain of publications. I'm not sure they're necessarily contributing to practice post-COVID, but that's a, an opinion. So before closing the page on Fufu, um, and I want to talk about what's next, maybe some critical reflective questions here. You may wish to respond in the chat box. I do hope someone's put a link in the chat box to our blog. Um, it's an interesting question to say, what was your top read last year? Uh, sometimes, you know, if you ever get interviewed by me for a job, I will ask that question um, and ask you why. How do you filter the literature? That's a really important consideration when we're all busy. What is it that helps you select that literature? What we tried to do in our top 10 this year is have different sorts of publications. Actually, um, Stephen Downs did a feature, a little commentary about our top 10 and said that was the most valuable contribution, not the 10, but the way we saw articles that people may not find elsewhere. And then truthfully, you know, how much time do you really spend doing the slow reading? I can tell you the most rewarding part of the exercise is forcing us, me in particular, to go to those articles and about a hundred others that we sift through and really having to spend some time doing slow reading and writing about them. So on that note, what's next? What's the next chapter? There's only so much. I'm not sure we'll keep our top 10 going. We'll see. I'm not committing to that at this point for another year. But what we are looking to do is things a little bit differently. Um, just recently, actually, I closed my Twitter account. Um, I have been on Twitter for a long time. Uh, that was both a philosophical decision and a bit tired of Twitter, putting it bluntly. So um, part of what's next is a uh, TikTok channel. DigiEd Talk, you can go and sign up if you like. And the intention is to rather do written reviews of recent publications. It will be a very short video of what we're reading or what I'm personally reading at the moment. I've got a slight misgiving about the um, I part to this, and I don't really want this to be a vanity project, but it's tricky to do a, a group um, unit video and we'll start this off who knows if the genre will work or not so that's one bit but actually i'm really intrigued by the idea of journal clubs um, obviously book clubs have been around for a long time believe it or not there's research on the use of journal clubs in education a systematic literature review there so it's one thing us looking at the literature and giving you even a three minute video for what is worth reading or not an interpretive commentary but what about getting a group together virtually on a regular basis to talk about an article to get us to slow read an article it's better to read one thing i think really well than to read a hundred and a skim fast reading mode so that's on the agenda for 2023 as well these are um, plans. They're not concretized yet, so don't hold me to them. Um, the day job might get in the way, but I hope they sound interesting. And also, ultimately, uh, if you've um, not heard of the top 10 for this year, at least you've now had a quick overview of them. I'm going to stop on that note. Um, coming back to Dr. Seuss, of all the places you'll go when you read, maybe, or listen and view at the same time, but hopefully in a book club, you can really engage and contribute as well. So thank you very much. We'll stop um, on that, and um, I look forward to seeing you, hopefully, at some stage in person over the course of 2023. Cheers.